All right, folks, we are live. Michael Lafito, happy Friday. This is our 43rd Luxury Lunch and Learn. And uh, I'm filming this one from the home office today. And I'm really excited about today's guest. We're going to talk about global luxury real estate. We're going to talk about, you know, COVID-19. We've talked a lot about how it's affecting real estate here in the States. But today's guest uh, is part of various groups and organization, is also an agent with Sotheby's. And we're going to be talking a lot about global real estate and how it's been affected because of COVID-19. So with that being said, if you have questions, shoot me a note. If you're watching this recording, you can always shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. But if you are watching live, we're streaming this. Uh, if you are watching this live, please uh, type us a question, let us know. And then Samira, our guest today, she will also share her email address where you can ask questions after the fact if you're not watching this through the live stream. So Michael Lofito, 43rd Luxury Lunch and Learn, and I have Samira Easton on today. So Samira, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell everybody a little bit about um, you and, and your licensed agent and where you're based and as well as some of the different organizations that you contribute to or, or you know, you're part of. Okay, so first of all, I'm probably one of the few people in the United States that has three citizenships. I have a US passport, an Italian passport, and a Lebanese passport by virtue of either long-term residence in Italy or my father's nationality, which was Lebanese. So um, I'm coming from a background where I was working in international or organizations overseas. And then I went to work as administrative faculty at George Mason University. So this was my background before I came into real estate. And my master's in conflict resolution has been extremely helpful in this field. So um, I got my license three years ago. And at first I was with Keller Williams and then uh, after considering, well, some experiences and considering my background and my scope, I decided that um, Sotheby's was probably a better fit for me since they are really truly global and it's a global name and they're recognized wherever you go. So um, that's where I am. I'm a member of numerous organizations. I'm a board member of FIABC uh, Miami. I'm also a board member. I'm the marketing director for NAREP Sarasota, which is a newly established chapter of NAREP. And NAREP for those that, for those that aren't, aren't familiar with NAREP, that stands for? The National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. They're having their national convention this week, so there's a lot going on with NAREP. And they have some phenomenal speakers. I'm so impressed. They had like United CEO, Nike CEO, all these really phenomenal speakers. Um, so I'm a member of those. I'm also a member of my local uh, realtor association, which is Sarasota and Manatee. I'm a member of their global business council, which is a, an organization within the uh, Realtor Board that promotes international exchanges, MOUs with other Realtor Boards, trips overseas to meet other Realtors, and is just really, it internationalizes the Realtor Board. And in Florida, we have a very active international uh, Realtor sector because Florida Realtors has made that a priority. And, you know, we're number two in the nation. So um, we've had some amazing trade missions overseas. Last year at this time, we were in Dubai. There were 400 of us Florida realtors in Dubai, um, you know, checking out all the developments. I even got my Dubai real estate license, so there. Oh, is that right? Wow. Yes, and because I speak Arabic, that facilitated a lot of the exchanges and um, just an amazing, fascinating country. It's, it's like the playground for adults. So, yeah, yeah. So, so a couple of things I want to re recap. So you're talking about international, again, our audience, people watching replays, Samira, they're either looking to break into luxury or they are in luxury and they're looking to differentiate themselves even more. Right. So yes. being well connected 
right? Being well connected, having relationships, you know, Wayne Gretzky, you miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take or don't go to where the, the puck is, go to where it's going. So having your finger on multiple pulses, including abroad is, is really big. So we've had Teresa Kenny on, who's the CEO of the Miami Association of Realtors. We're, you know, big fans of what you're doing down in Florida. And, and so again, you are out there, you're learning, you're networking. And I have many times agents that say, well, how do I get additional exposure on my listings? You know, I, I tell agents all the time, you need to know where your feeder markets are or Absolutely. your migration patterns, right? So in your case, where are people coming to Sarasota from, right? So I, I know the answer, right? So a lot of these high tax states, uh, people that are fleeing New York and, and that sort of thing, and probably Chicago. But it's important for our, our, our audience to know that as well. You need to know where people are moving in from primarily as well as where is people moving to. Now you can work with title companies and there's other service providers that can help provide you data. And then you of course want to build relationships with top agents in those feeder markets okay. so that if you have a referral, you, you can trust that you're handing them off a client to somebody that you like, you trust and knows what the heck they're doing. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. And as you said, uh, referrals are key and personal relationships are key. So I've really made it a, a mission of mine to go out and meet as many people as I can. I attended all the conventions. I'm also a member of ARIA, which is the Asian American Real Estate um, Association. Yeah, Association. Yeah. Yes. So I've been to all their conventions. I go to the National Association of Realtors conventions, all the big meetings. I attend those, whether they're in, you know, um, different cities or whatnot. And so, so, um, so hold that point, please. I don't want to, I'm going to interrupt you, but I don't want sure. you to lose that train of thought. So folks, you have Samara here. She's been a licensed agent for three years. She's probably been to more conferences based on this conversation we're having, then 90% of real estate agents have been licensed 20 plus years. And so she's out there. Real estate is a face-to-face -face business, not just for selling and working with buyers and sellers, but also networking. And I tell agents, when you grow your knowledge, your confidence will grow. And she's out there in three years, attended more conferences than 90% of others. Continue with that thought. Sorry. All right. So, of course, I'm going to send any clients that want to um, move up north or the friends that I make up north are going to send me clients down here. So I work a lot with referrals. And because I know what kind of a person they are, I know what kind of service they are, and I can hold them accountable. And I usually refer uh, in my brand, so to other Sotheby's agents, but I also refer to a lot of agents that I feel are just excellent. I have a dear friend that's been a broker for 30 years in Northern Virginia. I've referred a lot of business to her. And she refers a lot of business to me because we've been friends since we were 18 years old at Virginia Tech. Yeah. So, you know, these kind of relationships, once people found out that I was a realtor, I was down here, they started saying, hey, we've got these people, we have relatives, we've got this and that, can we send them to you? And um, they know that they're going to get excellent service because when I provide service, I provide five star uh, service to my clients. Yeah, that's that's. Well, that's awesome. So again, it's relationship-based business. No different. I just had a high school buddy say, do I have a painter I can recommend? Or do you have somebody we're thinking about putting a, a an office in our basement? Again, when we refer someone, it's a direct reflection on us. So same thing in real estate, right? So you want to build relationships. Okay. You got to do your due diligence. It's probably fair to say, Samira, that even if there was a relationship you had with someone that wasn't Sotheby's, but you felt more comfortable, you would refer outside of your brand with someone you like and you trust versus someone that you don't know within the brand. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Absolutely. This friend of mine that I've referred numerous people to, she is actually Keller Williams. Okay, so perfect. Yep. Um, and yep. then, you know, overseas, they don't always have these kind of brokerages, you know, global brokerages. So you have to work with I work with uh, Marina Rosenberg in Milan for my Italians. Um, I'm working with Sotheby's in Rome for my listings in Rome. So, you know, it depends on, I have personal relationships with a lot of people. I have to say that um, 
networking with Fiopsi and attending their events really stepped up my game. The Fiopsi yeah. relationship was very important. Uh, when um, I just had a very interesting thing happen to me, I had applied to be a global ambassador for NAR uh, for Italy, Spain, and uh, Portugal. And they recently reached out to me and said, hey, we had to hire a Portuguese speaking person for those countries. Would you be interested in Belgium and Netherlands? And so I said, of course I'm interested. And funny thing was that in December, I had been to a conference in Ghent, Belgium, and I had networked with all these folks, these Fiabsi folks who happened to be the NAR representatives in those countries. So slam dunk. I'm ready that, to go. That, so that, that so Fiabsi, uh, I'm also a member of Fiabsi. I've presented. Um, their American president, Hugh, I'm actually going to have on our show in a couple Great. weeks. Um, so again, you see a common theme and that's really what I wanted this guest and, and this show to be really about is luxury more than local real estate is, is really more global than, than anything else. So when you're talking luxury, you're talking upper end price points, you have to be even more well connected because buyers are going to do their due diligence. And so these are, and you need to do your due diligence on who should be a good referring partner. Absolutely. And I think also it's a very good um, practice to be uh, networking with international attorneys like Stefano Lucatello. He's fantastic. He's Italian British citizen based in the UK. And, um, you know, when I have situations- So, so why, why is that important? So just so you understand how a transaction, just like state to state in the United States, every state's different. Florida, is a, are you attorney based or are you title based? Correct. We are, um, tied, we, we can do both actually. Okay. Cause I, like, always hit, use, I always use attorneys. Okay. So I thought, I thought Florida was one that uses attorneys as is Illinois, but some States, for those of you that are watching mm -hmm. some States, literally you don't get a real estate attorney involved. The title company acts, does some of those ancillary services that an attorney does in an attorney based state. Mm -hmm. So is it important to have relationships with attorneys abroad because every country or even regions within a country have a transaction that is, that's different from region to region. So by having a relationship with an attorney, you are doing your due diligence, protecting the buyer or the seller in this case. Absolutely. And, you know, using Italy as an example, the whole, um, the whole real estate transaction process is very different than the US. You know, the deposits, the surveys, all that is very different. The commission structure is very different. And in Italy, they use a notary, but he has a bigger role than even an attorney does in Italy. So the notaio is the one who actually handles the transaction. But having an international lawyer like for example, Stefano Lucatello is very handy because he's got a whole network of providers in that, say, Portugal or Spain or Italy. And um, you really want to be protected. There are many things that you need to be watching out for, the taxes, the residence, the, um, how you're going to title the property. And also, if you have a will, how you're gonna include this property in your will. So it's always a good idea, especially when you're doing international global luxury, you should have an attorney on board. All right, so what I also heard you say is if you have a great attorney, just like you and I are doing, we have a, a great a, a network of high, high ethical and related and knowledgeable real estate agents. So if you have a referral in Colorado or New Jersey, whatever, you can help your client. Same thing in the attorney field. So what I hear you saying is this attorney, even though he's based in Italy, if you have a, if you're looking for an attorney in Portugal or, or Germany or, or what have you, you can give this gentleman a call and he say, Hey, I have a, a guy that I highly recommend. So thus you're ensuring that your clients are taken care of and they're, 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 they're matched up, they're paired with that top uh, attorney in that given area. Correct? Absolutely. He's actually based in London. But okay. um, 
he he does transactions all over Europe. So he's got he recently well not recently he has a book that's for sale on Amazon that kind of walks you through international real estate transactions, which is a great book. I've gotten so many golden nuggets from it. Or would you do me a favor um, and get me a link to that? And so we'll post this in the replay. We'll make sure we, we, we post that link to the book that you're referring to so that those of you that are watching this live or in replay will have access to that. Right, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Um, so talk to me a little bit about uh, your Florida market real quick. So you're seeing an uptick, right, in activity during, COVID. you hate to say a pandemic has helped your real estate market, but is that fair to say in your particular area? Absolutely. At one point we had eight, 800 pending listings in the Sarasota Manatee uh, real estate board. So um, inventory is super low. We're almost down to like one month's inventory. Um, even the luxury listings have been selling very fast. So, so it is so luxury has been selling fast entry level. Talk to me about the vertical living. How's the condo market, the high rise, yeah, not high rise, but the condo market, um, in, in these big cities, is that slowed down a little bit? Because again, your feeder markets are, are higher tax states, people fleeing the shelter in place. They want to go to warmer climates, but I got to imagine in these bigger cities like Atlanta, Chicago, and LA, the, the vertical living has been affected because of COVID-19. People don't want to share common, uh, you know, foyers or workout rooms, that sort of thing. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, there have been a number of developments that are happening now in Sarasota, new developments, you know, the view, the... Um, Boulevard, and then of course the the uh, Beso Sarasota that are being built at this moment. So there is demand. They've already started taking reservations, and they're almost you know um, they're taking down payments as well. Um, I'd say people in a certain price bracket are definitely going to want the single family home. Okay. So, um, but it depends on their needs. If they are going to be only spending like you know, a couple months out of the year, then they might go for the condo. But um, as more people are learning that they can work away from home, obviously they're looking for the single family home. Okay, which talks to me about this. You have a, a development, tell me a little or two that you wanna talk about today. And mm -hmm. uh, for any of our listeners live or on, if you have a question about this development, We'll make sure we post Samira's email address and contact information so you can contact her directly. But talk to me a little bit about what, what you had sent over via email. Okay, so in Sarasota, we have the um, Beso Sarasota, which is Coulter Urban's luxury condominiums. They will be breaking ground in the summer of 2021. They're taking reservations right now. They are from two to three bedroom condos and the building is actually going up right behind the Ritz-Carlton residences in this new area of downtown Sarasota called the K. So they're going to be award-winning restaurants and shops and uh, this building is very particular. It even has a dog park. So, and 24 hour concierge service, it's, it's just a beautiful building that's going up. So that's one of the two developments that are very interesting now. The second one is really a, um, uh, a breakthrough in uh, condos because it's going to be, it's called the Nativo Miami. And it is a building which is going to incorporate the Airbnb system. So, people buying units there when they're not using the units can rent them out as an Airbnb. Okay. And they have a management company that will be taking care of these condos while you're not there for a fee of 25%, which I think is reasonable. This building is incredible. It's got office space. It's got a hotel from certain levels and it's got a whole recreation facility on three floors as well as a swimming pool. So I'm talking like, and it's right next to the port of Miami. So anybody coming in and coming out of Miami can go and stay there as an Airbnb or actually own an apartment and stay a couple of weeks or a couple of months, whatever their needs are. Is there a limit as far as can they live there full time? Yes, they can live yeah. there full time. And what's the price point starting at blank and, and as high as? 
Um, they start, I believe the smallest unit they had started at 300,000. Okay, very and good. And they're furnished. They've got nice. a designing team that furnishes them and then they go up, you know, to the okay. three bedroom plus den and whatever. But it's, it's just a great concept, I think. Um, and I think we're going to be seeing more of these multi-use condo buildings in the future, okay. so, especially um, in this luxury market. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, good. Well, Samir, what's the best way if somebody wants to find out more about you and Sotheby's or, uh, you know, they said, man, she's well connected. I want to ask her about her attorney relationships. What's the best way for somebody to, to be in touch with you? Well, via email or my phone number. Um, should I and, share? And, that, and, and your email, Samira? It's samira.easton at premier sir.com okay very good and we'll put we'll we'll type that in the chat feature uh afterwards for those that are watching live or or, or, or the replay we'll make sure you get um and, and share your phone number that you're comfortable sharing uh yeah. via live so this is my virginia phone number 703-963-0622 yes awesome um any any uh any words of advice for those agents looking to break into luxury uh, or those that are maybe struggling? Some people are thriving during pandemic, but there are some agents that are, are really struggling both mentally and, and business wise. Any words of advice on this Friday? Well, I have used this um, COVID time to really a get more designations. So now like I got 20 and I'm all excited about them. <laughs> Hey, we like our designations. Don't forget about the luxury listing specialist designation. Absolutely. We're actually going to be doing another virtual live designation training on October 28th and 29th. You can check it out at luxurydesignation.com. Yes. Yeah, so I caught up on a lot of education, but most importantly, I participated in a lot of webinars because when you watch these webinars, like the other day, I think it was yesterday, NAR gave its third quarter report. And that right. was very interesting. It was the global update. So they talked about each and every market. And that's how I got all my nuggets of gold uh, yesterday. Um, I've also gotten involved with these organizations and, um, you know, volunteered. These are all volunteer services. And that kind of integrates you also into, uh, you know, personal connections, connections with people that are interesting and that, you know, will help with your business. Because once you become friends with people, they're all re all about helping each other. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then I've done a lot of, you know, webinars with internationals. I did a whole series on buying property in Italy and buying property in Florida with my friend Marina Rosenberg in Milan. Um, so I've done some fun things as well. Uh, the key is to get involved with these organizations, honestly. Your yeah. global council at your local realtor board, uh, ARIA, which is the Asian American Real Estate Association, NAREP, which is your National Association of Hispanic uh, Real Estate Professionals, and FIABSI, which is the Federation of International uh, Real Estate uh, Federation. Yeah. Yeah, so, we've had we've had each of those organizations, including NAREB, which is another great one, National Association of Real Estate Brokers, which mm -hmm. is uh, you know predominantly African American. But all of these groups, all these associations, are all inclusive. You don't have to be Hispanic to join NAREB. You don't have to be African American to join NAREB. You don't have to be Asian to join ARIA. I've had NAGO Rep on National Association of Gay, Lesbian, Real Estate Professionals. These are all organizations. I encourage. Uh, people to look into and, 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 and perhaps join, um, which brings me, um, Samir, I'd love an introduction. NAREP is the one group that we have not showcased on here. I've liked, I've wanted to, I just haven't had um, a relationship with anybody. So anybody that you think from NAREP, uh, from a, a, you know, a leadership position, I, I'd love an introduction because we'd love to give them a platform to talk about what they're doing. I'm personal friends with Sarah Rodriguez, who this year, she's the uh, president of uh, NARA, the national oh, cool. president. And she is actually an attorney uh, that has her own title company. Oh, really? Okay. So she's an amazing person. I would love it if she could speak with you. 
Yeah, that would be great. And, you know, for, for your sake, uh, we're hopefully going to get our course approved for continuing education in Florida. We're approved in Georgia and Illinois. Florida's on our radar. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that because it'd be fun to come down by you and do some stuff when things loosen up and hopefully go back to quote, quote, normal. Oh, uh, it's going to take a while, I think, to get back to normal. And of course, all our travel is going to be curtailed until 2021, I think. Um, some trips that I have planned are going to be Fiabsi in May in Paris and looking forward to Dubai in October 2021. So yeah, yeah. All the, this year, all the conferences are going to be virtual. So reach out to those, you know, groups again and get involved and watch their webinars and uh, participate. Mm -hmm. Participate is key, right? Showing up is half the battle in anything in life. Be present, mm -hmm. be in the moment, come and lead with a giving hand, right? Come from a service mentality. How can I help them? Mm -hmm. And good things will happen. Absolutely. Hey, make it a great Friday, everybody. You never know what somebody's going through, struggling. Be empathetic. Uh, come from a place of understanding. Be a good listener and, and make somebody's day. My name is Michael Lafito. Thank you so much for your time, Samira. And uh, again, those of you that are, you can check out our YouTube channel, Marketing Luxury Group, for previous replays. You can check out our previous episodes on our podcast, LuxuryListingPodcast.com. I think we're on 108, 110 podcasts at the time of this recording. We're always continuing to raise the bar in real estate. And if you know somebody that you think would be a great guest, put them in connection. Connect them with me. Put them in touch with me, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. Guys, don't forget our Luxury designation training is coming up, like I mentioned, October 28th. It's about a month away. We have a, a running down countdown clock on it. Check it out, luxurydesignation.com. Zero sales requirements. If you've never sold luxury or you don't sell luxury consistent and you're looking to differentiate and more importantly, you're committed to increasing your average sale price during and post COVID-19, check out luxurydesignation.com. My name is Michael Lafito and have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Samira. You're Bye -bye. welcome. Take care. Thank you. You too.